Movement in Armored Core 6 is so smooth. Even in my heavy tetrapod that can feel like moving through, uh, what is a joke about a robot that's trying to move but is impeded by a substance? Why did the robot bring a straw to the oil spill? Because it wanted to sit pose fully slurp through the slippery situation. Yeah, I think I'll be okay for a while. There's still some simple movement tech I can implement to dodge some of Armored Core's slowest missiles. But you can really push your top speed if you drop all of the cool big weapons and put on a lighter frame. You don't even have to think about missiles at these speeds. Look at this shit. Of course, your enemies will start to move faster and faster as well. So you won't be the only one easily outpacing your slow ass laser shots. But as me and my opponents approached light speed, something felt a little off. Look at this. Main system, activating combat mode. Now, look at this. What are you aiming at? What are you aiming at? And you know which one's more fun? Uh, this one, obviously. This is my movement like one hour in Armor Core 6, and here's my movement like six hours in the Armor Core 1. <coughs> Armor Core 1 is so hard to control, and you have to manually aim while trying to move and fly around at the same time. Pile this on top of controlling aiming up and down on the triggers, and you've got me popping off for just flying over a building while aiming at the enemy AC. But somehow, having difficult controls that make me really think about each individual component of the AC makes it feel more like piloting a giant robot that I have no idea how to control which you'd assume makes the better game. The game about piloting mechs that feels more like piloting mechs should be the better game. And for some people, it probably is. But for most people, they just want a game that's fun to play and has palatable controls. There's a reason that BattleBit, the game about mindlessly running headfirst into enemy bullets over and over until you capture a point, is wildly more popular than the game Hell Let Loose that's about crawling through the mud for 30 minutes until the sniper that's been zeroing in on your position from commands radioed into him from his officer who's keeping track of every enemy soldier's position and updates his team on their location based on their average speed and time elapsed fires the perfect shot, taking current wind direction and speed into consideration and sends you back to spawn, a 15 minute walk away from the nearest objective. You'd think that the closer and closer something is to simulating the real thing, the wider the audience it'd have. But at the end of the day, doing this in 15 minutes versus doing this in five hours please, 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 please. is just more fun for more people, but can feel just like piloting a dude with boosters and guns attached to him. Armored Core 1's, uh particular control scheme makes it a unique experience worth visiting even today if you missed it like I did. There's a lot more components to your mech that you'll need to worry about in Armored Core 1, like the ability to lock on to specific types of enemies, see baddies more than like 10 feet in front of you, and increase the lock on angle for some of the more narrow ranged weapons. <laughs> Again, a lot more of a pain in the ass than seeing if it overburdens your mech or not, but makes you a lot more intimate with your Armored Core and each of its components if you're into that sort of thing. So I don't know, if you for some reason played Armored Core 6 and thought, man, this robot is just too easy to control. I hate being able to keep track of my enemies and making jumps between platforms on my first attempt. Then check out Hoonie Pop 2, because I don't think there's any mechs in that game at all. At least, I think. Okay, I swear I'm moving off of Armored Core now. Subscribe to make sure I don't play more Armored Core. Uh, unless you want more Armored Core. In, in that case, subscribe for more Armored Core. Uh, okay, bye.